okay, understood the topic, right? So, but uh, before we uh, take up this topic, uh, the effect of ring nitrogen, which is synonymous of the topic effect of heterocyclic or rather heteroatoms on uh, different uh, reactivities and structures, etcetera, etcetera. Uh, if you re recall last time, we classified two different kinds. One is the effects on the physical properties and second one is chemical properties. Right? And just uh, very quickly, uh, let me uh, give you a review questions and see whether you can uh, come up with the right answers uh, to this um, problem. Okay. Uh, let us say, uh, if we mix these two reagents. Uh, this is um, oxytin, right? And then, uh, if you just uh, heat it at uh, some degree, you know, 150 degree. So, uh, what would you expect, or uh, from this reaction? Do you expect a reaction first of all? That means we have two different kinds of the heteroatom. Uh, the purest uh, uh, compounds are or the sorry, uh, the starting materials are oxygen and methylamine. We just simply hit that, no catalyst, nothing. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, ring opening followed by by nitrogen. Fine. So that means uh, what you're suggesting that uh, the compound should be this, right? No, you have to uh, fine. Uh, that's that's a good suggestion, though. But uh, well, answer obviously is no. Uh, this uh, so uh, what does it reflect basically? It reflects this. Okay, the reaction product is uh, reaction product is uh, this alcohol here and uh, this NH and Me. So basically, it's a ring open product. That's all. Uh, okay. So uh, because simply because all of us know uh, that I mean you have there are two different kinds of atoms. And uh, the one of the better nucleophile is nitrogen, all of us know. And then, say, and since the um, uh, cycle is a four membered ring, so it should open up. So, this is a basically that means, uh, on the other hand, uh, if you um, uh, think of a similar reaction with a cyclobutane, uh, you, you do not expect such reactions. So, that is the basically the heteroatom, that means uh, it imposes a strain and uh, then it opens. Uh, that means, that strain is responsible or the driving force for the reaction. But uh, similarly, if you let us say, uh, look at a reactions of this kind, let us say uh, this uh, six membered ring uh, uh, with the similar reagent. So, you do not expect a reaction. So, that means it all depends, uh, all of us know this is uh, this is three membered is more strain than four membered is less strain, so so on. So, that means this ring opening etcetera in the heterocyclic compounds depends on the uh, ring size, that is what. Okay. So, that means heteroatoms, uh, uh, although it, uh, the size of the ring uh, imposes the strain. But the heteroatom gives the uh, uh, electrophilicity. Electrophilicity means this, uh, this weakening of the carbon hetero bonds. Whereas, uh, in the previous uh, in the case of the cyclobutane, the carbon carbon bonds are, are very strong. Okay, this is just an example. Now, um, uh, so the uh, next category is basically the effect of heteroatom, but uh, we will exclusively talk about the effect of nitrogen on chemical reactivity on chemical reactivity. Okay. So, uh, how many kinds of um, the chemical reactivity is uh, <coughs> are manifested by the heteroatom okay. or by or by dictated by heteroatoms or on the uh, so which one I mean I have a list of something like 12, 12 different items may be you can add may be you can subtract may be some of them are overlapping. But, um, but we will systematically follow some of them and we give examples basically today. We will classify the types of the effects of nitrogen and the reactivity and then uh, give some suitable examples. Uh, in fact, uh, most of them are the latest examples in the literature, current literature from the chosen from the current literature. Uh, the first thing what you can think of all of us know that it alters the uh, pK value, right? Uh, pK values of these compounds. Uh, that is to be important. So, whenever you have nitrogen oxygen the corresponding pK value increases at the at alpha position or at the nitrogen I mean depending on the situations. So, uh, this is a and most often in the in undergraduate you have seen 
the discussion on PK is taken up very early in the uh, courses, simply because of why? Because the, the reaction is basically chemical reaction, right? Decision of acid means chemical reactions, one of the simplest possible chemical reactions. And that gives you some clues about the reactivity of a molecule. So, that is the reason. So, similarly, we will we'll, we'll have more examples on this. Uh, on the, uh, we'll come back. Just let us uh, see what are the items uh, which are uh, classified under this category. That is the effect of uh, nitrogen on the chemical reactivity. Other possibility, I think many of us know uh, without writing. Uh, so, well known to all of you, uh, never in group participation, right? So, never in group participation. Third category could be, uh, third category could be um, uh, site of the substitutions, uh, site of substitution, uh, uh, nuclear substitution. Let, let us say site of, I mean, when I uh, talk about this, actually, I am meaning to say that let us say if you are beginning with, let us say, a molecule like uh, pyridine. So, <coughs> you know that uh, actually the uh, orientations or this, uh, the positions of the nucleophilic or electrophilic attacks are governed by uh, the nitrogen. So, all of us know that. that, uh, that, that. So, then uh, uh, it is also, uh, this, is, uh, this is a very important uh, case, uh, chelation. Chelation, I think all of you know chilation, the meaning of the chelation, right. Chelation means, say, uh, formation of a ring uh, and that too involving a metal good so you remember and then then also sometimes it promotes the uh, remote uh, functionalization remote functionalizations now normally the reaction takes place at the functional groups or at the alpha position or at the beta positions but uh, these chelations etc all these uh, can also promote reactions at a very remote place let us say far away from the um, um, position of the uh, heteroatom and then what else I mean, uh, uh, so when I say uh, site of the substitution, actually it can also involve the nucleophilic substitution as well. Okay, so then uh, anything else uh, induces our tautomerism, right? This is a very important factor. Whenever you have an heteroatom, there is a likelihood that it can cause tautomerism. If you have uh, non heterohydrate like carbon, carbon only pure carbon carbon uh, compounds, carbon hydrogen compounds, you do not see any tautomerism. Well, we see, I mean, there are cases, but uh, strictly speaking, but, uh, but at some point somewhere, the uh, presence of heteroatom is a must. Uh, and uh, um, so, tautomerism and that also sometimes uh, induces uh, the, uh, the heteroatom also uh, the rearrangements, rearrangements. Then, what is the other possibilities? Also other possibilities. Uh, this is this is this is actually the sixth. Huh? Uh, well, fine. So, by induces tautomerism or the rearrangements, condensation reactions. Uh, the, the basically, the, the, the means, uh, or you can say uh, that uh, site of the substitution that is important. The site, site could be in the ring. It could be on the nitrogen. Okay. So, nitrogen that means basically the substitution or uh, in addition whatever the taking place at the nitrogen end that uh, come under the side of the substitutions. Okay. Then uh, the next most important one is that that uh, uh, a nitrogen uh, can uh, stabilize this is a very important one all of us know I think know, but, but uh, often we miss it st can stabilize alpha alpha <coughs> carbocation this is important uh, what else uh, carbene like in N NHC like in NHC. So, you can say uh, then uh, what else A radical anything else think you can think of carbon ion no that is I mean that, that is that is the exception. So, the nitrogen cannot, uh, in fact, rather it destabilizes the carbon ion. So, <coughs> and uh, very similar to this, I think, uh, if I, uh, I do not know whether you, uh, I do not remember whether I taught this one. This is a very important one in uh, uh, nitrogen heterocycle and oxygen heterocycle. There is a effect called, did I teach you in the fourth year? 
tertiary amino effect tertiary amino effect i don't know whether you know or not uh, uh, maybe this time i taught uh, uh, this is a new batch this is a uh, very, very very interesting and uh, you will find plenty of papers just uh, write uh, uh, tertiary amino effect to google we will find what will uh, basically what it demands and uh, on the name as the name implies uh, it, it requires a uh, tertiary amine function and uh, what it does actually it's a minus hydride and so uh, you can understand what happens minus hydride means this alpha position uh, hydrogen is uh, kicked out and it forms an aluminum salt so then uh, so so this is the origin actually then where does the hydride go hydride goes to an e electrophilic position within the molecule that's an intramolecular version so this will give you more and more examples okay uh, so uh, the, i'm just basically listing the possible uh, listing the possible effects and etc right Okay. In that case, carbonyl is stabilized by nitrogen. Uh, uh, carbonyl is stabilized by. Nitrogen. There is effect of nitrogen in stabilizing the carbonyl. Oh, okay. Uh, I understand. No, no, but that's not a carbonyl. If the anion is on nitrogen, it is nitronyl, right? Not. If, if the anion is on carbon, then it is called carbonyl. But if the if the nitrogen alpha, 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 alpha. Uh, we are talking about the sp two, mm -hmm. uh, sorry sp three sp three sp three nitrogen. That's the sort of that we are there. Actually, we are coming to that. Actually, there is a point, but the, but we uh, uh, have put it in a different category. Okay, it's just like a ship's base. Okay, that's the, the next one. I think the next week. Then uh, this is an important one. Any case, we'll we'll give more examples. I'll come to your point. Okay, the, I have categorized some of the things. Maybe I have missed it, but uh, see, uh, most of them are not in any book. Uh, I have just listed them. Okay, so if you can add any uh, additional effects anywhere, just I'll list them. But um, I'll try to um, include all the possible effects. Okay, uh, then uh, there, <coughs> there is another effect probably. Um, I think uh, all of us know uh, this is uh, alpha amino effect, right? alpha amino effect essentially it is nothing but uh, alpha effect how many of you know alpha effect okay good so this is uh, so basically it is an enhanced effect right enhanced uh, nucleophilicity of nitrogen bearing with an heteroatom at, uh, side, uh, next to it next to it like basically the uh, higher reactivity of hydrogen with amine high over amine okay then uh, these are uh, this uh, next item is basically that uh, 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 Sieff's base property basically. That's that's the uh, Sieff's base property. That's what you are talking about actually. So uh, Sieff's base property means uh, if you have an imine, so imine the uh, the pyridine let us say or let us say two methyl pyridine. So this is equivalent to uh, we'll have more example <laughs> I think uh, next class we'll have more examples on this uh, type of the category. So, it would be uh, looking like this. So, it is an imine and so and that means the, this molecule would uh, act like an aldehyde which is equivalent to you can say uh, equivalent to a uh, sort of an aldehyde. So, that means in the as if uh, the uh, acetylate oxygen has been replaced by nitrogen. So, obviously, the, all these parallels are uh, known that means uh, it will uh, like acetaldehyde it forms the carbon ion. So, that means in this case this carbonyl is stabilized not only not by the heteroatom, but it is the functional group the carbonyl pi bond and the functional groups. Well, to some extent you can argue yes the heteroatom the carbon is hetero, um, uh, stabilized by the heteroatom, okay. but uh, the when I are talking about this alpha stabilized actually uh, this is the this alpha, alpha anion is not that means alpha in this case the number 6 when I say talked about this. Uh, it is stabilized by the carbocations and um, uh, alpha carbocation means uh, if you have a system like uh, say uh, you have a plus charge here and you have a nitrogen up here then this lone pair uh, would stabilize this carbon ion just like you have seen in uh, friedel cups reactions friedel cups reactions what have you seen uh, friedel cups reactions uh, you have a carbocation and 
know, oxygen and then uh, this actually stabilizes. So, so, so and similarly, then if you have a carbon and, and a nitrogen here, so uh, this nitrogen is also be stabilized. Similarly, radical also is stabilized by nitrogen all with at the alpha position. And uh, uh, yes, alpha amino effect, right? Right, 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 right. But uh, the peroxide has less basicity than hydroxide. Means it is the reverse in case of basicity. Why? Basicity. Means uh, uh, hydroxide is uh, more more basic than peroxide. Ah, okay. And uh, peroxide is less, uh, more nucleophilic than hydroxide. Means why the reversal of the thing? See, the, there are two items here. again. Uh, for one is the nucleophilicity, or is the acidity basicity. Okay, they are two different things. When you talk about the nucleophilicity, uh, most often we forget that that is a kinetic parameter. Most often we forget. I mean, many people do, many uh, most people do not rather uh, differentiate and loosely talk. Okay. And uh, so, it is all depends on the uh, actually uh, hydrogen peroxide OH is uh, more acidic, right? Hydrogen peroxide acidic is more OH than the water, than water. That means that the pK value of uh, uh, pK value of uh, the first pK value of hydrogen peroxide is less, lesser than water, simply because just uh, on the count of the electronegative, uh, electronegative ox that means you have an additional electronegative atom, so it is likely that that is all, uh, the corresponding hydrogen would be. And uh, when it comes to nucleophilicity, we talk about transition state, when you, when you talk about the pK and pK, this is basically the, we talk about thermodynamics. Okay. And, uh, <coughs> So, then secondly, uh, this is also a part of one, uh, what you will find, uh, this, uh, this, is a, uh, this is a special kind of reaction, uh, uh, Minsky reaction, this, what is the effect? Uh, Minsky reaction, Minsky is an Italian scientist, uh, the reaction was discovered long ago, some 100 years ago, but uh, it was uh, uh, quite uh, I mean uh, neglected, but the recently people have begun to react to this, it is a special kind of reaction, so you will find. Uh, it is a, uh, a radical kind of a reaction. It is a radical reaction. It is a radical reaction, and these reactions can be carried out in water. And uh, you can you can generate this alkyl radical, and this alkyl radical reacts adds to the hetero um, heterocyclic compounds. And this uh, radical there, then uh, like in previously I said, nitrogen radical, uh, nitrogen can stabilize the alpha radical, but in this case, nitrogen radical itself is more stable itself is more stable and we will give you more example there. that again we will we'll give you more examples on this. And lastly, uh, lastly uh, uh, this is a reactions of an uh, is, is a VNS, uh, VN, V stands for uh, vicarious, uh, vicarious and uh, nucleophilic uh, substitution reactions, nucleophilic substitution reaction. Okay. Uh, I mean probably, you know, the, I do not know whether how many of you know the meaning of vicarious, vicarious is basically unusual, unusual for us unusual reaction that is all. And um, I mean one can say Chichi Babin reaction, right? Chichi I think all of you remember, I do not have to say anything. This is Chichi Babin reactions, if you have pyridine, you have an amide reaction, it gives the amine. But uh, uh, in this case, the the, the group that is uh, the, the molecule that is lost is the corresponding hydride, the corresponding hydride. Okay, uh, the kind of similar. I said pretty unusual reactions, but uh, uh, in vicarious substitution reactions, what you'll find that the nucleophile would contain a living group at the uh, alpha carbon, uh, alpha nucleophile. I, I'll, I'll give you example a little later, maybe a little later. Okay, so, the other thing, anything else can you think of? I think if you remember all these things, then, you, then if you are given a problem and you can immediately extrapolate that uh, okay, cyclohexane does not have a nitrogen, uh, then piperidine has a nitrogen. So, you can expect some of these reactions. Well, let's, let us say we talk about, uh, um, uh, talk, talk about let us say, uh, for example, cyclopentadiene, we can talk about. Okay. Now, uh, going from cyclopentadiene, if you put just substitute this, these things, so what sort of uh, what sort of uh, uh, reactivity would you see? Uh, 
just to compare the reactivity. Okay, so this is diene, this is aromatic nucleus. No, we do not go that. We just see, yes, that means it, it has given the aromaticity that has been uh, covered in the first class and then the previous class. So, that means this bonding, etcetera, all these things. Okay, but uh, uh, when it comes to reactivity, that means it can increase the acidity, right? Acidity. So, uh, uh, what is the acidity of this one? This hydrogen. Many of you know, I guess, acidity of this hydrogen. Uh, what, what should be the PK? Uh, let us say, what should be the PK value of this? Pyridine, uh, pyrrole, and what should be the PK value of this? Cyclopentadiene. Any idea? Anybody? Okay. Uh, PK value. PK value of this car, this, this circled hydrogen. Okay. How many of you know how many PK values? This is important. At least you have to have some uh, knowledge. Okay, good. How, how, do you, how much? 4.74. 76. Okay. Oh, fine. Uh, very good. No, uh, organic compound. Organic compound. It has cyanoacetate. Eh? It has cyanoacetate. How much? Uh, possible, possible. I do not remember, but I can guess uh, pretty close. You are very close. So, something like that you have to remember. These are, these are very useful guide. I uh, will tell you why. Okay, let, let, let me give you some of the data first. Okay. So, our uh, starting point in this case, since we are talking about the heterocyclic compounds, uh, so uh, our starting point is a cyclohexane, let us say. Uh, what is the pK value of the circled uh, hydrogen? Okay, good. 40. 40 is good enough. What is good enough? So uh, then uh, this this one uh, cyclopentane. Okay, okay. Uh, the, from uh, the book, uh, uh, this is 35. So but uh, that, these are all not very accurate the, in those range. Actually, it's very difficult to determine. So you have to uh, take these values uh, with a grain of salt. Okay, and um, then uh, if you have a let us say now piperidine. So, uh, now this is a game where we actually basically we are replacing this uh, carbon with nitrogen. Now, we have, I mean quite obviously right, what should be the pK value? Should be less than 35 or more than 35? So, that is that is it. That means, it can alter. So, you have to have some rough idea and in this case the, I mean this uh, is not that very, very significant. Now, uh, come to this is a very important uh, see this is a cyclopentadiene is a very important molecule for all of us right for organic for as well as inorganic people we, uh, they don't say cyclopentadiene what they say inorganic people they don't they, they will never utter uh, cyclopentadiene they will utter only cp <laughs> they will say cp1 cp2 cp3 all these things that eta1 eta2 eta3 all these things okay so so but uh, but this, i think uh, we have as an organic chemist we have need to know this thing uh, the pk value PK value here. Uh, very good. Good. So, it is a black magic. <laughs> Do you know the meaning of black magic? Coincidence. Okay. So, uh, uh, now you are now is sure. <laughs> and um, so, so, we have already said that. So, having said that, then. So, what is the, so then what should be the value here? What should be the value? That is what I thought. <laughs> that is what I thought, but again it is a marginally different, marginally different the value given here is 16.5, 16.5. Mind it, uh, in both the cases, by the way, both in the, both the cases, see, the, the, you know, it is important to note actually. In both the cases, see, normally, how do I go by, uh, how do I uh, estimate the pK value? The, the quickest way is to see the stability of the conjugate base, that is the standard way. So, the conjugate base in this case is uh, this one, and in this case, it is obviously uh, it is this one. So, which one do you think is more stable between the two? Why? Right. So, equivalent number of equivalent structures are more. 
So, even though nitrogen is more electronegative, uh, so, but uh, that that is actually that that higher acidity in this case is compensated with that equivalent structures. Okay. So, any case, but for us, uh, 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 so that means, uh, just replacing the nitrogen is not enough, we have to think about all other things. And uh, now, let us start take another uh, molecule, which is a uh, very well known molecule. Let us say, uh, what is your guess now? Uh, indole. Take an indole corresponding, so what should be the pK value? Well, uh, okay, uh, how is that? I think uh, 16.97, so it is pretty close. So, that means, that basically gives you an idea that uh, the pK values are very similar to each other. Okay. Now, come to another molecule, actually the molecules of our interest uh, and uh, Supriti's interest. And so, let us see, Supriti should uh, know it. Uh, what is it? What should be the value then? Okay, uh, when it forms anion here, it can undergo delocalization. It can undergo delocalization. It can break the uh, tautomerism, uh, uh, resonance, uh, uh, aromaticity, uh, all these things. Okay, it's problem is okay. Okay, so uh, so that means it's very difficult to estimate actually. Well, we, one can uh, guess that there are two uh, benzenes are there, so it should be more acidic. All these things, but again, it, uh, you don't know whether these uh, equivalent structures of the conjugate base uh, could be different. So, <laughs> essentially again it is a very, very similar, very similar. So, that means, uh, the lesson what we get here uh, from pyrrole to carbazole, the pK values are very similar, very similar. Okay. So, your uh, standard uh, number is uh, in this series, what is the standard number? No, standard number you, you reference number you should remember. 15, good, very good, cyclodiene. So, if you are handling a five member heterocycles, remember always compare your basicity, acidity, etcetera to uh, these things. Like say now, if I take imidazole for example, what should be the pK value of the imidazole hydrogen? Lesser or? Lesser than 6.7. At least less should be lesser than 15, because you have additional uh, electronegative atom present in that. If you have triazole, even more acidic. So, like this, that means you can extrapolate. That means one number you have to remember that is 15. Okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, let us uh, take, uh, take another molecule, for example, uh, quickly just to have uh, this idea about this succinamide. It is a 5 member heterocycle, so, but uh, it has no uh, structural similarity with the uh, other molecules we discussed. So, but uh, <coughs> when you talk about this NH, what should be PK? The PK. No, no, less than. Okay, our reference point is now 15. So, but uh, okay, uh, this is actually the PK here uh, is uh, six. So, acetic acid, how much? You said four point something. Pretty close. What does it mean? You can uh, you can just uh, react this with potassium salt, like you have uh, made the potassium thalamide, etc. In the amine Gabriel amine synthesis. Okay. So, the, that means you can easily form the potassium salt section. Okay. And uh, uh, moreover, this compound, um, I think those who are now practicing uh, organic chemistry with NBS reactions, oh, this is the byproduct from the NBS reactions and it is highly water soluble. If you remember in the last class, we talked about the solubility, the heteroatom can cause solubility uh, increase exotic. Okay. So, and uh, let us see now, but uh, why do we study all these things? Why do you study all these things? You have to make use of it. In fact, we have very recently, in a few years ago, couple of years ago, we have made use of this uh, principle. Uh, we had a terrible problem um, in doing an alkylation of a carbazol derivative, but in that case, we had an OH group. We had we have an, we had a OH group here. Our job was to, uh, we wanted to we wanted to selectively uh, selectively uh, do this alkylation here selectively do alkylation here how do you do or is, whether it is possible or not <coughs> right have you understood the problem 
uh, let us say R x, there are two labile hydrogen N H hydrogen O H hydrogen, no protection obviously, uh, uh, first of all whether it is no, no protection we in fact, we did not do it the protection. Let us say if you do this and a base, base normally many I do not know whether you know or not normally under this, this sort of uh, alkylation of labile um, oxygen and nitrogen. So, uh, potassium carbonate, potassium carbonate occasionally people use uh, PTC phase transfer catalyst. Okay. So, these are the standard protocol. Now, let us say uh, if we follow this standard protocol which one would be alkylated first answer. Okay. Now, that means, what you have to know one more value phenol what is the pk value of phenol? Good, oh, very good. We have a good memory then. Uh, so ten, actually ten. Uh, close. You are also pretty close. Ten. So now know that the carbazol has seventeen. So uh, assuming both of them form the anions, okay. Assuming both of them form anions, let us say nitrogen minus oxygen minus, and all of us know that pK value gives a good guideline to the nucleophilicity. With the pK is higher, nucleo nucleophilicity is higher right because conjugate base is more nucleophilic that means um, the that means, that means conjugate base of a weaker acid is more nucleophilic right so in that case that means nh should have been more nucleophilic and we would have obtained this nr here uh, in fact this 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 was a very competing reaction very competing in we got three products we got doubly alkylated nitrogen alkylated oxygen alkylated. So, how do you do? So, what we did we, uh, we just basically uh, check the rate rate of the reaction uh, whether mono alkylated is producing uh, nitrogen alkylated or oxygen alkylated is producing faster okay. and what we found that oxygen is producing uh, oxygen alkylation is faster than nitrogen alkylation although the pK value says nitrogen. Why? Any idea? PK value suggests that nitrogen should be alkylated first because of the nucleophilicity. But in really, uh, it is actually the oxygen that is getting first alkylated faster. That the, 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 and but this is the thing when may, may, you have to also keep it in mind. The, uh, no concentration effect. Under the conditions, under the condition, the uh, potassium carbon <laughs> is not a strong base. Is not a sufficiently strong base to pull out this NH nitrogen. Like the difference between many of you know, like sodium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate reacting towards the uh, phenolic OH, phenolic OH group. Okay, so th that sort of thing uh, uh, because of the assistance and base strength, like sodium bicarbonate uh, does not react with. Phenolic OH. So, uh, with potassium carbonate, with potassium carbonate, which problem is Okay. So, potassium carbonate is sufficiently strong enough to pull this phenolic OH group in sufficient concentration, and that could be one of the reasons. That means you have to be little cautious about the pK value, that just only pK value is not enough. Okay, that gives you some guidelines, but at the same time the concentration effect is very important. If you can produce a particular anion in sufficient concentration, obviously that becomes more nucleophilic, more, more nucleophilic. The reaction is a bimolecular reaction and normally alkylation reactions are uh, anionic alkylation reactions the bimolecular reactions. So, eventually we could solve this. Okay, so, by taking advantage of the higher nucleophilicity of uh, this oxygen here by virtue of having higher concentration under the conditions. Okay, and uh, let me give you one more uh, very related uh, related example. Uh, this is an old one. So benzo quinoxolin, benzo quinoxolin, and uh, if you uh, have this, then you treat this with dimethyl sulfate. Dimethyl sulfate. Dimethyl sulfate, nothing else. 
So, what do you expect? Is it plain dimethyl sulfate? So, no, I did not do anything, just dimethyl sulfate, nothing else. Maybe I advised a solvent like ethyl, normally we do it in ethyl acetate, because both are solvent and ethyl acetate. In alkylation. alkylation. So, again, you see the pK value is pretty, uh, this is very high, but you have to be very careful that you are not actually pulling out that uh, hydrogen. So, under the room temperature normal conditions, uh, what, what do you <coughs> get? The product is uh, this one. So, I mean uh, whatever the knowledge we have, I mean just if you just apply them and uh, what you will find? This is a CH 3 plus and and, uh, and what? And uh, dimethyl sulphate. So, uh, this monosulphate right? Uh, it should be right minus minus that is it. And in fact, uh, to give you a clue, if you are going to be an organic chemist, uh, what happens? Uh, if you <coughs> let us say this is a typical reaction often we do. Uh, typical uh, if you are trying to uh, do the O methylation for example, uh, what do you do? Uh, you use uh, dimethyl sulphate, potassium carbonate etcetera, potassium carbonate after the reaction is the uh, uh, potassium carbonate after the reaction over what do you do? Uh, take this crude reaction mixture and treat with something. No. Uh, no, uh, sodium hydroxide can be used, but in most often we have many other functional groups. So, that can cause uh, problems to other functional groups. Uh, not really, Bica uh, see that is the problem, bicarbonate is not nucleophilic. Uh, the purpose is to purpose is to destroy excess dimethyl sulphate. Uh, water is not that soluble, it takes lot of time, lot of time to get hydrolyzed. In fact, um, dimethyl sulphate is um, uh, purified by aqueous bicarbonate, uh, aqueous bicarbonate. So, that way that means, because of to remove the sulfuric acid etcetera. That means, that means, that means dimethyl sulphate is sufficiently stable to water. So, just by adding water you can decompose. Quick way, I have given you the clue here. Triethylamine, triethylamine this nitrogen is quaternized at room temperature, just in half an hour it, the reaction is complete. So, then it becomes a quaternary salt, the, when it forms a quaternary salt you can just wash out with water, solubility increases you can wash out with water. Okay. So, uh, that means, the, I mean this this uh, nucleophilicity pK is uh, sometimes very useful, but you have to just sit down and think about it. Okay. Uh, let us see one more, uh, now let us case of let us say uh, I mean we have many many examples basically, uh, this time uh, the case of let us say uh, st stabilization of uh, uh, alpha, car alpha uh, carbocation, stabilization of alpha carbocation. Okay. Uh, now, just I uh, will give you an uh, example and uh, first I will not give you the answer, uh, you tell us, you tell me uh, what happens, this is a Indian derivative with NH and OME. X, the reaction at room temperature. room temperature. Uh, NH would at least uh, you have uh, at least you have begun to think that is that is a possibility though, but, but you have to again the, you have to use a pk value. P k value. 
okay, between C H between C H and N H which one is more acidic N H fine that C H means about goes to around 40 and N H N H goes to uh, close to 30 close to 30. Okay, so, that means slightly more acidic fine. Now, now you see that there is an, you have to think about the equilibrium uh, the normally I think if you go to Solomon's book you will find uh, if you are under, under you are analyzing a reactions involving a carbon ion the product that should be formed should be a weaker carbon ion. In this case what is the carbon ion we think I mean we think about ethyl minus ethyl minus right uh, to start with then it should go to uh, corresponding this one okay, and it should produce something else uh, that is the anion and x anion and that should be weaker than weaker than e at minus. Okay. So, but uh, that means in this case uh, if you if, if you are thinking of deprotonation from the nitrogen that means it should produce n minus so between n minus and ch minus which one is weaker between which one is weaker base is it so okay <laughs> ethan pk okay pk Okay, P k of ethan is how much? Ethan is I said 4, 40, N H is 30. So, the P k is here, it is less. So, the corresponding? Okay. Which one is? Which one is more? Let us say between the uh, CH minus NH minus, which one is more stable? NH so that means low weaker base. Yes, so that means it should be a, a good option, right? Uh, but uh, <laughs> what is the other possibility? Okay, so it sits there. When you find that's perfectly all right. It sits there. Then what happens? No, you have to produce. You have to predict a reaction. So, when you quench the reaction, what happens? You get the starting material back. That is it. That means, there is no reaction. So, what else do you expect? Okay. And anything else? Okay. Between of all these things, uh, you have a benzylic. Benzylic hydrogen is almost equally, uh, I mean, st strong enough as ethyl minus. So it will basically carbon and producing a carbon ion. There, there is a little uh, difference in reactivity. Okay. Other possibility that this um, most cases in organometallic chemistry, uh, you will find the organometallics are slightly acidic in nature. They, they undergo coordination with oxygen, nitrogen, etc. The, you are ignoring the oxygen also and magnesium many of you know, uh, magnesium lithium all these alkyl metals will have a st stronger affinity towards oxygen especially magnesium. Okay. So, let us say we hope that okay, it also undergoes coordination with uh, oxygen. So, what, what, what next then do you see, expect? So, actually um, uh, one can expect that uh, N H and then oxygen and that that is coordinated to let us say magnesium. So, what is expected what next then if it sits there no problem then the, the you will get the starting material back no reaction. There is a possibility that this bond is pretty weak though many of you know uh, it can form a sort of a nitrinium ion. So, nitrinium ion. Okay nitrinium ion, but all of us know nitrinium ions are not that st stable the, the, that existence is also not well proven. So, what you can expect? You can expect a synchronous migration, synchronous migration. So, 
the fruit then what would you see right uh, if my migrates this become nitrogen right oh, oh okay sorry this one become nitrogen right this nitrogen and and the, the this position become plus this become a plus what is the driving force the driving force is in this case nitrogen oxygen bond is weakened by the coordination to uh, with magnesium followed by migration because why the migration all of us know the driving force for a, any reagent is the stabilization of the ion produced carbocation that is produced uh, in this case once this uh, nh this is nitrogen now this lone pair would uh, stabilize this nitrogen is that okay any confusion they justified so that means you have a now uh, nitrinium ion have a nitrinium ion and uh, so what next then that okay that means at least some rearrangement has taken place the counter <laughs> the cation should be neutralized so then you have rmgx actually uh, in this particular example uh, three equivalent of the um, grignard reagent has been used and what you will get you will get a uh, nice uh, uh, quinoline system nice quinoline systems and uh, you will have uh, this is then r r basically so that means from an indane derivative nitrogen substituted indane derivative we are getting a tetrahydro quinoline system and there are plenty of examples uh, this has been done very recently uh, very recently so it is just a, a, a typical example of the carbon ion being stabilized by nitrogen that's what you have to keep it in mind okay uh, let me uh, uh, give you one more example let us see whether you can work out or not let us say uh, if you be, uh, take a diamine these diamines are very useful these days uh, the diamines yes a uh, three equivalent probably i, I don't know i have to go, uh, go to the original literature uh, i don't have the page number uh, with me uh, probably to pick up this nitrogen uh, hydrogen nh hydrogen two equivalent it uh, could be enough just i, I don't know it's basically uh, i have to just go to the literature yes two, officially two is enough uh, but normally we don't count two uh, for example lh reduction etc all these things of, officially it is one more one fourth of these but we give a lot of excess you know uh, maybe to make this reaction uh, undergo faster completion that could be one of the reasons i, I have to see that but uh, uh, yes maybe uh, maybe one magnesium is uh, uh, already inactive due to the coordination to oxygen maybe the second one maybe uh, picks up this nh uh, hydrogen and third one adds i mean you can account for all these things but uh, exactly i don't know but um, um, our um, task here is to see i mean what is the driving force for such a rearrangement such a nice simple reactions often see we had the idea that okay uh, grignard would react with a uh, multiple bond but it is a case here that uh, you don't have a multiple bond but multiple bond is being generated in situ and that is undergoing reaction okay uh, let us uh, look at one more reaction so even uh, similar kind of uh, stabilization is possible probably uh, stabilization of the carbocation by nitrogen and, and it's a simple reaction and in this case you have uh, a 1 2 diamine 1 2 diamine now just uh, leave it for some time one day two days in a solvent and let us say is chloroform and then uh, that is this first step then second step just uh, remove chloroform by uh, remove uh, remove chloroform so you get a product uh, so what is the product what is what? any idea what is the product just so actually all of us know uh, the shift phase formation is a very fast process but uh, that that shift based formation is uh, driven to the right 
by the removal of water. So, when you actually remove the solvent, part of the water goes out, and so you get a sieve space kind of formations. And actually, the product that is formed in this case is a quick, quick, you, you are right, not the yes, it is a ketal, nitrogen out of the ketal, nitrogen out of the ketal. Okay. So, you get uh, the nitrogen, so imidazole derivative. So, uh, now we know the names 1 3 nitrogen 5 membered ring. So, spiroimidazole, pyroimidazole. Okay. And that is net, then obviously, this hydrogen here and hydrogen such a simple reaction. Next, what? Next, uh, this reaction uh, again uh, it treated with NBS, NBS and room temperature. NBS and room temperature. You get a nice product here and bromine free product, bromine free, uh, free product. So, what could be the product? Just room temperature, all these reactions are room temperature. Room temperature remove the solvent in this thing. NBS means uh, when you say NBS, the NBS actually uh, has uh, two different kinds of reactivity. As, uh, one is that it generates the radical number 2 is a bromonium ion, uh, especially in presence of little bit of weak acids is bromonium ion uh, is produced. Okay. And in the uh, now, you can see that uh, in, in NBS uh, bromine is attached to nitrogen, uh, in this case you have a nitrogen up here and between the two nitrogen we know which one is more nucleophilic. So, that means, a N bromo compound will be formed, N bromo compound and so, the N bromo compound will be formed. N bromo compound and this, right? Acceptable? What next? What next? N, N and N halo bonds are pretty weak bonds. You can fertilize, you can hydrolyze, you can do uh, any kind of thing, they are not very stable bonds. N chloros, N chloro compounds, N uh, bromo compounds, NBS, uh, okay. and NBS fortunately is pretty stable and they, it can be crystallized from water, right. So, you know, uh, but not uh, under radical conditions. Sir, and uh, under these conditions, yes? The nitrineum and bond is minus. Right, that is it. Uh, the, but what is the driving force? The first of all, uh, there are actually three different things here. Three different here. This is a, this is a weak bond. Number one. This is a, a strained system. Number two. Uh, this nitrogen lone pair stabilizes. So you have the three different factors. That's why the reaction is so fast. It takes place at room temperature. And the product that you get, product that you get is. Get the, the, this one. So again, uh, and what, what, how do you describe this product? Is a fused imidazole, and uh, fused imidazole, or anything else? Do you see the functionality present in this molecule? What is the name of the functional group? Actually, the title of the paper says uh, name the paper the preparation of these compounds by cyclic. This is this is an important nucleus though. This is an important functional group. What is it? In heterocyclic chemistry, this is a very important functional group. No. Uh, where do you see this? Have you seen any molecule, small molecule? Uh, no, even a smaller molecule. Uh, not really. Close, close, close. Guanidine. Guanidine. So, this is actually uh, amidine, amidine functionality. Amidine functionality is a very powerful base. Okay. So, uh, that and right, someone said DBU. Actually, DBU is a, is a bicyclic amidine, and that is that is their target actually. They, don't, they did not produce the DBU, but they have produced many, many bicyclic amidine. Okay. So, we will have uh, very quickly, uh, so similarly, just I uh, will have more example maybe. Um, Maybe one more example. I think this is an old example. 
old example. Let us see how, how much you remember. Uh, uh, what is this compound? It, it has a general name. Mustard. Very good. Sulfur mustard. Mustard. If you put nitrogen mustard, nitrogen mustard. Okay. So, if you add water, uh, what is your observation? Violent reaction. Violent reaction produce HCl and uh, what it does? It so <laughs> all of us know, right? That never in good participations. Never in good participation. So and uh, what, 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 what is meant by never in good participation? It actually enhances the reaction rate. That's number one. Number two, it can generate two different structures. Two different structures. I think I, I don't have to tell you. The one more structure also is possible. Once you form a three-membered ring, uh, but because no, th you have to at the same time you have to mind it that the um, uh, the three-membered ring is a ring strain, so it will open up. That you have to remember. That means it forms a heterocyclic three-membered ring system that forms. Okay, and it, I mean it has two effects. It can give two products, and the re re reaction rate is enhanced. Okay. Similarly, if you put nitrogen in the place of sulfur, you can go to the same thing, right? A similar effect you see. But what happens if you put oxygen? Yes or no? No. Good. You remember that. Okay. Then I the, will uh, give you just this is the last example. Uh, this was published in last year. Uh, by, by, uh, by an Indian scientist, they dissolved this compound and uh, left it at room temperature and they published uh, this JOC paper. <laughs> this is a simple bromoamide. What do you think? I mean, the way I have written, I think you can guess. Again, in a case of never in good participation, never in good participation and you have now lone pair that is actually stabilizing and what he suggested I do not know how far he is right, but his paper is accepted and uh, he, he has got the corresponding salt only which is quite obvious right. Now, after publication everything looks pretty obvious and uh, if you are interested. Uh, you can go to this journal. This is uh, 2011 uh, JOC and uh, page number 680. And if you are interested in the name of the scientist, it is E. N. Prabhakaran. Okay. I think uh, so. We'll have uh, more examples. Basically, see, we basically we identified uh, 11 different uh, reactivity profiles of heterocyclic compounds or other heteroatoms. So. We will uh, take care of those things.